Hi, and thanks for your interest in the island unit. The purpose of this presentation is to provide an update on the estuary restoration project and some context for recreational considerations. In this presentation, I'll cover some project background, the goals and objectives, what the current design concept includes, and some context for recreational features. The island unit is located on two diked islands in a tidally influenced reach of the South Fork of the Skagit River. The department has owned and managed the island unit since the 1950s to produce crops for overwintering waterfowl and as a public hunting area. Changes at the site and on the broader landscape, including aging tide gates and dikes, anticipated sea level rise, and shifting habitat needs prompted the department to evaluate alternative land management options, such as removing dikes and tide gates and restoring the site back to estuary. Specifically, additional estuary habitat is needed to recover threatened Chinook salmon. The department assessed four land management alternatives, ranging from no restoration to restoring all 270 acres. We evaluated alternatives based on state requirements and policies, fish and wildlife needs, community values, and climate resilience. An advisory group provided input throughout the alternatives analysis process. In addition, the department held a public comment period. In early 2021, the department selected the option to restore all 270 acres of the island unit to estuary. At the time, that meant we were taking out all dikes and digging channels. The rest of the details would be determined during the design phase. Preliminary design began in the fall of 2021. Here are the goal and project objectives that are guiding the design. We're focused on restoring processes, so things like the tides and floods washing over the site and the movement of sediment and wood. These things create and maintain habitats. We also want to assess potential impacts to neighbors and support recreational use of the site. Our project objectives are to remove infrastructure like dikes and tide gates, construct tidal channels, make sure what we're doing matches what we'd expect at this place on the landscape where a dynamic river meets the bay, establish native vegetation, look at risks to neighbors, and incorporate recreational features where compatible with other objectives. We put the design work out to bid and hired the engineering company HDR. We convened a technical advisory group to review consultant products and provide input on the design, and then staff from across habitat, engineering, and wildlife programs at the department are guiding the project. Design includes a number of features which I will walk through now. The first is dike removal and that's shown in red on the map. Most of the dikes will be removed to allow tides and river floods to wash over the site. We are doing partial removal to protect some large cottonwoods on the northeast corner of the East Island. You can see the large trees, um, most of which are cottonwoods, shown as green dots. And then there's one area in the southeast corner of the East Island where we're leaving a dike in place because it doesn't impede river floods and tides. And you can see that down here. Um, we're also going to be filling borrow ditches. And um, that's the yellow hatched simple, symbol. <laughs> Straight simple channels are not beneficial from a habitat perspective. We are also um, excavating a lot of channels. Those are shown in blue, both light blue and dark blue. So you can see there'll be curvy branching channel networks. Having a lot of channels and a lot of outlets is really important for salmon to be able to access the site. The dike removal and the channel excavation creates a lot of extra soil and we need a place to put it. So we're going to use it to create high elevation areas on the northern portion of each island and that's shown in the green hatching. It'll be lower than the dikes are now, but higher than the rest of the marsh plain. And this mimics elevations on nearby native marshes, and it'll provide some habitat diversity. We'll create low angle landing points, and there are three around the edge of the site. One here, one here, and another down here. 
So instead of a vertical bank at these locations, we'll pull the bank back, making a better landing for boats and weed control equipment. We'll also construct fords across the channels, and those are shown in a little bit darker blue dot. Um, and this is a place where weed control equipment can travel um, across channels and, and make its way around the site. We'll also be constructing mounds, and these are shown in white stars. Um, these are for recreational use. And then the last piece is the bridge. There's a bridge between the two islands that may stay in or it may come out. The department is currently considering the pros and cons of each of those options and making a decision shortly. Next, I'm going to review some information that's related to elevation and water levels which in turn predict vegetation. I'll start by showing elevations across the del delta and how they relate to current elevations at island unit. And this gives you a sense for the type of vegetation that's expected to develop at island unit. So if you look at these images, the one on the left is a large scale um, view of the delta. So you can see the North Fork, the North Fork coming down here and the South Fork coming down here. So Island Unit is located right here in the mouth of the South Fork. And if we zoom in, you'll see Island Unit is right here and you might see other places you recognize. This is Fur Island Farm. This is Wiley Slough. And this is Milltown Island. So you can see Island Unit has a wide variety of elevations from those blues through the greens up to the yellows and into the oranges and reds. So a wide variety of elevations will ultimately result in a wide variety of vegetation types. The other thing to look at on this map is where we are relative to the river and how much the island unit is subject to river floods and the sediment that it carries compared to other places in the delta. So it's really right in the middle of the river and once we take those dikes down, the river will wash over the site and probably a lot of sediment will get deposited um, across the site. So this slide on the left shows an image of the percent of time any particular portion of the site will be underwater. So the blues represent areas that will be underwater almost all the time. The sort of light greens and yellows are underwater about half the time, and the oranges and reds are um, underwater a very small amount of time. So these are model results from an earlier concept, so it's just really to give you a sense, a general sense of how long different areas of the site will be wetted, and that in turn is linked to what kind of plants grow at any given location. So the downstream ends of each island are going to be wet, those kind of south, southwest parts, um, probably ponded at all times. Um, either unvegetated or possibly have some low marsh plants like sedge. Um, the middle elevations will be marsh with sort of mixed marsh plants and then the highest areas on the northern ends are expected to support shrubs and trees. So on this slide the graph on the left shows water level at three locations over time and the three locations are the Seattle Tide Station which is a blue dotted line Wiley Slough Marsh on the west side of the Spur Dyke, so where it has some protection from the influence of the river, that's the solid blue line, and then Freshwater Slough um, at the department's boathouse, and that's shown in yellow. And what you can see on here is that the Freshwater Slough site, which is the best proxy for what water levels will do on the restoration site after the dikes come out, those water levels fluctuate, but there's a floor on how low the water gets, and that's because of the flow in the river. That river level really limits how low the tide can go. And I have another illustration here, a little video, that shows water levels during a two-day period as the tide comes in and goes out. <clears throat> and so this is just another way of illustrating the same concept. There's a floor on how low the tide can go, and that means some areas of the site will remain ponded even at low tide.
Next, I'm going to run through some of our past restoration projects and the recreational features that were incorporated in those. I'll start with Lekway Island, and here you can see on the northwest corner of the project a hand carry boat launch that was included. Also, there's a parking lot and a walking trail on top of the wave protection berm. And along the way, there are benches and interpretive signs. And then the last piece was a boat launch um, over in the town of Stanwood, um, not on the project site, but associated with the project. Next is Milltown. Um, this site is higher elevation than Lekway or Wiley or Island Unit, some of the sites you may be familiar with. On the map, you can see dike removals in yellow, the dike that will remain in red, existing channels in dark blue, and new channels in light blue. Now, because the site is higher elevation, the tides don't inundate the site as much as sites like Lekway or Wiley. And in order to provide shallow water habitats for waterfowl and hunting, we included half acre shallow depressions in three locations. And let me just point to those. There's one up here, there's one here, and there's one down here. Those are expected to hold water through more of the tidal cycle than other parts of the marsh. Similar to island unit, digging channels and removing levee will generate soil that we don't want to have to haul off site. So we needed to find places for it near where it would be excavated. <clears throat> so mounds, which are shown as kind of orange blobs, um, made sense at this site. And we located several of these on the southeast corner of the tidal headwaters as a place for waterfowl hunters to set up. Um, also similar to island unit, um, steep banks off of the main sloughs are really difficult to access. So we incorporated five unimproved low angle landings and those are shown in green dots. Um, these provide places for small boats to more easily access the island. And then just wanted to note here, many of the channels at Milltown are going to be constructed large enough um, that you will be able to boat into those as a you know, small outboard or, or kayak recreational boater. So we do have some recreational features included at Island Unit already. Um, there are the three um, low angle landings that I mentioned earlier, and let me just point to those again. One here, one here, and one down here. Those are landings that have been on the island for a long time, so if you've been out there before, you might recognize those. Um, the other thing are mounds. So we will um, have a top dimension of a, a top minimum dimension of 12 feet by 12 feet and they'll be high enough to be above most of the high tides. Um, this graphic shows all the possible locations. Again, they're the white stars. Um, some may be removed based on sort of final um, decisions about the cut fill balance and things that we need to fine tune as part of the design process. We are going to have some herbaceous vegetation management areas associated with many of the mounds. Um, and those will just be areas that the wildlife area staff manage for herbaceous vegetation. And then also this one, um, this site will be like Milltown in that um, the channels will be large enough to boat into. Um, many of them are, you know, almost 20 feet wide and several feet deep, even at low tide. And the site will provide a variety of habitats from mudflat and low marsh all the way that's, that's inundated all the time, um, up to areas that support trees and shrubs. So a nice diversity of, of habitats for different um, species of interest. Okay, before I end, I just wanted to um, review a few things to keep in mind while you're thinking about which recreational features you wanna suggest for us to consider. So the first is it's gonna be a dynamic estuary, um, which will be changing all the time. There will be the movement of wood, sediment, 
water, and um, channels may move around. You can see in this picture on the right um, the dike breach on the East Island, which occurred um, in the last few years, and the amount of sediment that's coming in. So this is just to give you an idea of um, there's going to be a lot of sediment deposition and um, things moving around. The second thing is farming equipment will not have access to the site the way that it has in the past. Um, we will be um, thinking about weed management equipment and having access for that equipment to some degree. We know weed management will be needed. There will be ponded areas without additional excavation. And the last thing is floating blinds and other infrastructure are really challenging to maintain on a dynamic site that um, like what will exist. And so we tend to shy away from that. Following the end of the public comment period, the department will consider including your ideas in the design. We will also then proceed with preliminary design, final design, permitting, and construction. Thank you very much for your interest in the island unit, and I hope you have found this presentation helpful.